The Toronto Blue Jays' struggles against AL East opponents continued yesterday on Canada Day against the Boston Red Sox. Now, a year after going 16-3 and against them in 2022-2023, the Toronto Blue Jays are now 0-6 against the Red Sox this year. Something's got to give. The team feels like they're close to breaking out, at least on the offensive side of things, but something needs to change here. Domino needs to fall, and we're going to break that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss, and another rough loss yesterday for the Toronto Blue Jays, and uh, in heartbreaking fashion as well. They were close, they were right there at the end. A missed decision by the coaching staff, or or even Bo Bichette, we're going to discuss it, who knows what it was uh, in, in the surface, but a missed decision cost the Blue Jays a game, and the final out was recorded at home plate with the Red Sox catcher just waiting for Bo Bichette to come and, and meet him at home plate. Yeah, the the Jays seemed like they were close to breaking out. It seems like every game they're a step closer, then they take two steps back randomly. The offense is starting to come along a little bit, but yesterday was uh, very unfortunate. But make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 7,500. And let's just get into it. Things need to change. The Jays aren't playing their best baseball. They cannot beat AL East opponents. Who knows what the reason is? And yesterday was just... Before I get into the game, Peter, what were your initial thoughts on what you saw yesterday in general and what you think needs to change from the Blue Jays, Blue Jays side of things? Well, the Jays got a couple of big hits yesterday, and and that pulled them back into the game. And we've been waiting all year for that big yep. hit, whether it was the Matt Chapman home run, whether it was the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. single to right field that nearly tied the game. We've been waiting for those moments all year long, and they've been coming. They've been coming, uh, you know, not as frequently as we would like, but they're on their way. And, and the Blue Jays have been scoring a few more runs as of late, apart from those three shutouts in the last 10 to 10 games that they've had, but they, they do feel like they are on the cusp and they're almost there. But from top to bottom, when I look at management, coaching staff, and even the players, I just feel like there is not a, a serious agenda in that locker room. And they made all those changes in the off season to, to try and work towards that, to try and be a more serious ball club, more focused on the little things. And now those little things that they focused on are the ones that are costing them games. Those That attention to detail has just not been there all season long for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, I don't know if it's on the coaching staff. I don't know if it's on the management for the lack of depth that they put together on this team, but you know, something's got to give here, Nick. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, fingers we can point, but it was an interesting point in spring training and all throughout the, you know, even a video they made on YouTube, or like the behind the scenes, John Schneider was talking about how important it is to focus on the little things, the base running, and every single game, it seems like there's some sort of blunder. Of course, the defense has been phenomenal as a whole, but that's kind of the one thing that has been a bright side, but let's just get into it now. The, the specific thing that happened yesterday, second and third, two outs, we're down by two runs, seven to five. This was following Matt Chapman's, you know, big home run earlier in the game. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. got the big hit we've been waiting for. But unfortunately, Bo Bichette ran the stop sign and uh, supposedly ran the stop sign and was out at home by about 5, 10 feet. It wasn't even close. <laughs> and it it was, a, it was a tale of the Blue Jays season. People on Twitter were going crazy. And John Snyder had this to say after the game. It's a really tough for uh, play for the third base coach, Lou Rivera. Could Bo have picked him up a bit of it earlier? Yeah, sure. You want to be aggressive, but you don't want to make the last out at the plate. And this was, of course, what I showed earlier. The left is with George Springer earlier in the game. And then the right is how far Rivera is down the line waiting to put on a stop sign. He put up the stop sign super late, an indecisive stop sign. And for someone like Bo Bichette, who is a pretty, you know, fairly fast runner, he wants to score, mm -hmm. especially with Bo Bichette's attitude. So he was running all the way, and then because the stop sign was so late, he felt like he had to go, and he did hesitate around. But, Peter, what were your thoughts on this uh, this big lapse, especially with Matt Chapman coming up, who had already doubled and home run earlier in the game? Yeah. There's a lack of conviction on this team, Nick, and, and they do things that kind of do them halfway. They're, they're halfway in, halfway out, and the same thing goes with the coaching staff. After the game, if I'm John Schneider, I'm ripping into someone. I don't know who it is. But I'm picking a side, and I'm usually going to pick the side of my star player, Bo Bichette. I'm, you know, John Schneider's been playing both sides all year long. He he doesn't want to throw his players under the bus. He doesn't want to throw his coaching staff under the bus. It's always we got to be better. It's always a collective thing. You know, sometimes you got to single someone out. Someone has to do their job a little bit better. And if I was John Schneider yesterday, I'm calling Louis Rivera out. There is no way I'm calling out my best player um, for that 
gaff by Louis Rivera. You got to have conviction when you're a third base coach. You're either sending him all the way, you're waving that arm around like you've never waved it around before, or you're throwing up the brakes. You're throwing him up like this, not hand on the chest like this, not, uh, not, oh, Oh, I don't know, Bo. You you decide. You decide. You want to go? Do you not want to go? It's up to you, big man. This, this is the biggest play of the game. Go ahead. You know, that's not how it works. you got to be sure of yourself. You're in those positions for a reason. If you're a coach, you got to have more conviction. And John Schneider has got to stop playing both sides. you got to go out there in the media and just call someone out. Enough is enough, man. Yeah, I think uh, you know. I think it was on Louis Rivera at the end of the day. Bo Bichette definitely could have read the play better. So He's not too. fully, you know... Uh, can't evade the blame completely but again in a situation like that you need to be very you know decisive with that and on the right side you can see his one hand was out like that which is obviously much different than his mm -hmm. conviction one literally the play before with the double but there was no he was also halfway down the line not that close to third base so if you're Boba Shett, you're probably running with your head down for a little bit just naturally and then this ended up you know costing them the game and he was out and you could have made an argument for blocking the plate but they're not going to overturn that when he's out by 10 feet anyways so I don't yeah. know. Very, very unfortunate. And quickly, we'll we'll move on from that for a second. And I agree, it's stuff needs to change. Let's just touch on the game yesterday, really quick. The pitching staff. You take Kikuchi struggled. What were your thoughts, Peter, on on the, on the pitching staff yesterday? If John Schneider could have done anything different, Nate Pearson's been dominant, but I don't know. It was a really rough game, and it seems like again the games where the pitching staff doesn't do nearly as well, the offense wakes up, and then the games where the pitching staff dominates, the offense quiets down. There needs to be. A change, I don't know if it's a mentality thing or whatever, or if it's just baseball, it's probably you can chalk it to sometimes, but the offense needs to wake up and help, specifically Kevin Gosman today. Just one more thing on, yeah, that, uh, on that hit to right field by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I could tell right away that it was not the right play to send um, Bo Bichette. Alex Verdugo's got the best arm in the outfield when it comes to Red Sox outfielders, so that was the play right away. It was hit too hard to even score and it wasn't hit deep enough either. It was right there for the taking. Alex Verdugo made a throw up the first baseline, and the catcher had enough time to go out there and wait for Bo Bichette because he wasn't even in the frame when he was rounding third base. So it, it, right away, it was just the wrong move. Someone's uh, someone's to blame there. But when it comes to yesterday's game as a whole, Yusei Kikuchi just did not have his stuff. His command was all over the place. It happens. You know, he's, he's your fifth starter. Still battled. He got the run support. Yeah, he, he battled. He gave you four and a third. Maybe not, uh, not enough, but... Um, he did what he had to do, in a sense. He gave you a chance to win that game. It's not like he blew up in the second inning and and it was the bullpen's job the rest of the way. So, I don't know. The pitching, uh, the pitching's got to be better. But that's the thing with this team. They're never clicking on all cylinders. There's always one thing that's going right, and then there's two things that are going wrong. I'd really love to see them play a week where everything is just going great and they're they're blowing teams out. It might be a lot to ask for, but they've done it in the past, and I know that they're capable of it. Yeah. And I I think they are close to it. I just don't know how long it'll be till it happens or if it will happen. I think it will. I think it will at some point soon. But luckily, you know, I know you're not watching the standings. I know a lot of fans out there are, you know, the Yankees are struggling. The Astros are struggling. Everyone else is struggling. But it starts with us. The Jays need to do good in their own right if they want to, you know, squeaking into the wild card is not good enough for a team like this. And before we yeah. quickly wrap up, let's also, I'm just going to touch on the fact that Kevin Biggio, a lot of people were hating on him, was an inch away from a, a leading double in the, I believe it was the eighth inning. So, Kevin Biggio, the Jay, a lot of things went wrong for the Jays yesterday, and a lot of things, you know, was their fault, but it was very unfortunate that Biggio almost gave him the close. lead with that double, very, very close, and ultimately he he striked out. But he's coming around as well, and if the Jays can just find a way to click on the offensive end, the pitching staff's been arguably top three in baseball as a whole. So any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, that uh, that foul ball by about yeah. this much pretty much sums up. It sums up the Jays' season, season yeah. right, Nick? I mean, they, they've been so close to those marginal plays and they, it feels like they never go their way obviously we're biased because we're blue jay fans and we want it to go their way all the time and that's baseball that's baseball they, they do even themselves out eventually so i do believe that the jays are close to breaking out hopefully they can find uh they can find that rhythm and they can play a couple of weeks of dominant baseball coming up yeah, hopefully we win today into the off day tomorrow to change some of the morale up. And then we play the Chicago White Sox, who have been atrocious this season. So that'll wrap up the video. Hopefully the Jays can get on a hot streak. We'll see you guys tomorrow.